So we are starting another three yard quilt and this is another fabric viewer's choice. I knew I wanted to do a holiday one. I knew that I wanted to zhuzh it up and we picked the colors together. Um, I think I'm going to just keep this one simple. We're gonna make this the one focus fabric. We are going to make this the two and we're gonna make the darkest one the three. This is a super duper easy quilt to do and right now it is a free pattern on the fabric cafe website so I figured we better hurry up and do this one as fast as we can so actually I'm gonna power cut this because again I, I, I want this done and it's not difficult to do but we're, I'm gonna show you a fun way to zhuzh up a three yard quilt so I am just folding it in half so that I can power cut this bad boy. Which means I'm going to be done cutting before you know it. I'm going to freshen up this edge here. And then we're going to get into it. I'm going to show you me cutting the entire one fabric and then just know that you've got different size borders for the different fabrics but I'm going to show you how fast this can be so make sure you understand that I'm getting two actually I'm getting yeah I'm getting two strips because this fabric is folded okay so I'm going to cut this one time But it's yielding two. Oh, that's how you're going to do me. Oh, well, that's extra stuck in there. I don't love that. So I've got two strips here. Let's do this again. watch what I'm doing here so I cut four strips now I'm getting ready to cut five border strips so that's two we're gonna get four Now I'm going to open this up and I'm going to go back and cut the one that I need. I just need one of those. And I just need one more of these. And that is truly power cutting in my opinion. And this is how much we have left over. So I have five border strips, one, two, three, four, five. And then focus fabric strips. I have four here. One, two. One, two here. And then three, four. And then from this last one, we need a partial strip assembly. When you're doing these partial strip assemblies, make sure you are... 
paying attention because you will use the whole, you'll need that whole strip. And it looks like I have enough. And we just need a partial amount. Right here. And this is what we have left over. So that's everything for fabric number one. That was fast, right? I'm going to go on ahead and cut fabric two, which is very similar. And same thing with three again. Free pattern, not a difficult quilt to cut out at all. And for the last one, I am not doing binding, so I have way more left over. I could have chunkied up this border, but whatever. Um, I don't love economy binding, so I usually don't cut the binding out. But in a pinch, economy binding totally works, and I have a video on how to do it on this channel. All right, we have all of our strips cut out. We just need to subcut this one. Where'd my subcut ruler go? I lost my little baby ruler. All right, so everything has been subcut. We have got border strips in every color. We have large strips in every color. The same amount which is pretty cool. And I think that took, it took me maybe 15 minutes to cut out everything, which is very fast. So if you're doing this for the holidays, you have time. You have time, you have time. We've got this partial strip here and some bigger border strips here. Such a sophisticated palette. I don't know why my mother was not feeling it. We're going to make her love it. All right, here's the fun part and the super easy part. We're just going to make some strip sets. I'm taking the borders away. And there's a pattern to it, and it's very simple. So... We are going to grab our strip set and we are going to take two of these and this one, this first block A is going to be fabric one, fabric three, fabric two. And we're going to do this two times. I'm not going to do anything special. Just do it twice. That's block A. Block B is going to be three, two, and then one. So this is block B. Three, two, and one. And the last block is gonna be two, one, and three. And you're just going to make one full one of these and then one partial one of these. So the partial strip was the one I just showed you guys, which is this. The other, the other blocks get two sets, but this one's going to get a little guy. And then we're going to subcut it. Super simple, super fast. <laughs>
strip sets together. I don't know what kind of counting I was doing or whatnot. So let's just look at <laughs> these strips together. So we have two of these. This is strip B as in boy, which I just finished sewing. We have one whole C. Really should put these in order for you guys, right? That just wasn't smart. Okay, C. And then we're going to do a partial one of C. It's going to get a little baby, a little baby guy. And then we have two of A. Now, let me show you how much fabric I really do have left over, excluding the little bits. And this feels more reasonable. It's not a whole lot. It's just that feels better than what I, I don't know. I don't know what kind of counting I was doing. So just make sure you count. This is not super difficult. You need two of these, two of these, and one and a quarter of these. Not not difficult. I just want you to get it right. I don't want to be, you know, making you think that I'm doing something funny over here. No funny business happening. All right, we are going to press all these seams open, then start subcutting. Something else I wanted to show you guys, make sure that you're starting your strips on the same side. I know that some people say sew down and then sew back up the other, the other side to kind of make sure that you don't get bowing. But for this, because you oftentimes need every ounce of this, you know that it's going to be jagged at one end because you've got different... Um, different brands and so different brands the fabric is different blah 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 so again just be sure to start on the same side okay oh yeah and for your little guy you don't have anything to waste here so if you cut it down to the dimensions that they suggest you do you need this whole guy so you're going to want to make sure that you are sewing clean and that your back end and your front end are going to end right at the same place so you don't have to worry about uh, trimming up or squaring up. You need all of this if you don't cut a little extra. It is subcut time. So now we are taking these strips. They've been pressed open. They are laying beautifully flat and we are going to just subcut and we're trying to get 12 out of each strip. So hopefully I make it because I did have to take off the salvage end. I'm sorry, not 12 out of each strip. That math was not mathing. Um, I need to get 12 total out of both strips. That math makes more sense. I need to put a little sticky on the, the line. Hold on just a second, just to make myself feel a little more comfortable. So this is just to make sure that I don't, <laughs> you know, um, I don't have to have these on here, but you yeah, know, I feel like this is one of those days I'm going to go live in a moment and I don't want to <laughs> embarrass myself and mess around and mess this up so we are just going to be sure we're using the right line I was nervous. Did you guys feel the nervousness? It was happening because I wasn't sure if I had enough to get what I need and still, but I do I have plenty, plenty, plenty. Ooh, that sounded terrible. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We can breathe. 
All right, after this, it's smooth sailing. Okay, now that we've got some of these cut, I'm going to show you the layout. Block A, which has the focal, not the focal, but the fabric three in the middle. Four blocks across the top, one, two, three, and four. That's block A. Block B has on the right, on the left hand side, the fabric number three. So one, two, three, and four. In fabric C, we only have two of these guys, but we are going to place This is not C. <laughs> that is A. Where'd my C go? Here's my C. And this is going to go on the outside. I will now be labeling all these blocks. And so we get this pattern here. It's going to go this way, this way, this way. And I'm focusing on this darker color right here. I think this is gonna be interesting. So I am going to grab an A, B, and C pin, put them in the blocks, and yeah. Start sewing all this together live. So if you wanna see me sew it all together, go on ahead and jump on over on my live, and then you can see how it really comes together, the innards. So all the innards have been sewn together. And again, I did this live. I sewed the innards together live. And I'm calling this the innards because it's inside the border. Um, easy peasy. All A's, four A's, four B's, four C's, and then it repeats. Beautiful. To do the borders, I'm going to cut off all of the selvages. And then we are going to just sew them together end to end. And then the deep plum is gonna go first, then the pretty number one is gonna go second, and then the burlap, this green burlap as my mother calls it, <laughs> is gonna go last. And all I'm gonna do, like I said, is just sew them all together end to end, then measure, and then sew it on. Nothing very special about that. So before, I just want to show you guys, just in case you've never seen how I do borders. So three of these borders are on already. And the side ones have been pressed back because we need the full um, length there. But here are some strips that have been sewn together. And I just lay it across right sides together to get the measurement. I don't measure with the tape measure. I just measure with the actual strip and I lay it out. And then I grab a marking uh, utensil and I mark it. Once I'm sure that I've got it all right, I mark that, then I cut it where I've marked it, and then I pin. I fold it in half, actually, first I'm gonna fold it in half. So I've cut this, I'm going to just fold it in half and I'm going to mark the halfway point right here. 
I'm going to lay that halfway point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So between these two, I know is my center. I'm going to lay that right sides together and pin it. And then I'm going to go over here to the sides and I'm going to pin either side. And because I have all of those seams on the other side, I will be sewing with this, the border strip down on the machine because I don't want to have to worry about flipping all of these little, um, you don't want to be flipping the, the seams. Okay, so after I've done that, I'll usually grab two Wonder Clips. And while it's laying flat, I will just, I'm going to flip these upside down because this is going to be on the machine. I grab two on that side and that's cool. And then we lay this flat. And we will do two. And that's what I do on every single side. The long side might get one more wonder clip, but for the most part. And now I will... Take it over to the machine right here and start sewing. So excited. I have been dying to use this guy. Scallop template. I like this one because of this curve right here. I do not like scallop templates. I have one somewhere um, that are just a big arc. I like it to have hills and valleys. I prefer that scalloped look on quilts. And so I have just gotten back this quilt from the quilter. It looks amazing. If you guys haven't done so already, please check out Janine at Queenie's Quilts. Um, a lot of you guys have. I've seen your quilts over there. I love that we are supporting small businesses, community. I, I love that. I love that I've been able to help her out with business. She does a fantastic job. Now I am going to do something cool. And the way that we're going to zhuzh a three yard quilt today is we are going to uh, scallop the, the, the edges, I should say curve, make them a, a wavy kind of border. And again, the template that I'm using to do it is, oh, what is this? This is by Krista Moser. It's the scallop template. And so um, I like this one because it's no math. It's a kind of an eyeball-y kind of thing, which is good. Um, it's good. I like it. Let's do it. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this. First thing I did was cut down a bunch of copy paper to, it says four and a half by six, but I wanted to get two pieces out of every eight and a half by 11 sheet. So I cut it down to four and a quarter. I'm going to stack these all up together. I've got four right here. And I'm going to take this curved template, the curved side, and I'm just going to line these up. And I'm going to place this just like this. And then I'm going to curve and just take my rotary cutter and cut that all off as soon as I can get them stacked up together. That looks good. And I'm just gonna get right in here and oh, there we go. So now we have these, we're gonna put those to the side. You'll notice that this has a small, a medium, and a large curve. It tells you the depth of borders. You can go all the way up to, I think, 12 inches um, and get a nice curve. For this one, we're just gonna do the small. I thought about doing the medium, but I think that just dips down too deep. So we're gonna do the small. 
And I think it's good for like one and a half up to like four inches. I'm going to take a couple of these and I'm going to do a couple at a time. Stack them up and line this up like this with the top. And I'm going to just follow the line. Now we have our curved templates for the corner. Now, now we have all of our pieces cut out. For the side pieces, for the corners, I'm just going to take them and fold them in half. So the first thing I'm going to do, if this has been quilted already, which I actually prefer. Um, I would prefer this to be quilted as opposed to not quilted. I mean, you can do this when it's just a top and then you can draw it and then you can quilt right up to the curve. It just depends upon how you feel and what you want to do. But you need to find your halfway point. So, I mean, your middle area right here. Um, I'm just lining up all these here with my ruler and then I'm just going to mark it with my hair marker and that way I can see it you probably can't but just figure out where your 45 is and then line this guy up with it and make sure that this tip right here is just touching the outside and it's lined up on that line and then put a pin in it. Do that for every corner. Now the object of this game is to overlap or spread these apart evenly so that you get a nice scalloped border. So here I'm just gonna move this over until it matches and I can see that that's a nice curve right there. And I'm just going to make sure this is straight. And it is. And that's where we're going to start our first scallop. And we're going to put a pin there. And it's nice and continuous. I like it. I can see where it's coming down. It's just dipping into this. Now that's one thing about my borders. Most people would do this on a border that's one color all the way out to the end, but I thought that's boring. So I like the fact that I'm gonna have some striping in this. It'll be a little different, but is it even mine if it's not different? I brought you over to the big ironing board because I want you to be able to see this all laid out. So again, this is not difficult. This is not math heavy or anything. This is all about kind of just looking at it. It's a curve. It's not going to be a huge deal. Just trust your gut. We've got our corner pieces pinned in the corners. Then we have the next piece, which is going to be the one that is sloping down. It just continues right off of that curve. Now, I've laid out all the pieces that I can fit bum, hill to hill, valley to valley, right? And I can tell that there's one more space right here. So I could try to put another one in there, which is not going to work because I'd have to put another two in there. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to space these out as evenly as we can. And you can space these out to about an inch and still get still have some action here and we are just going to keep pushing these until I've got I think I'm gonna need about a half of an inch between all of them and when I feel good about the amount of space that I have I will pin them and that's that <laughs> and that's it's it's just that simple so that looks even. I'm trying to make sure that the space is even between all of these. And yes, I could measure it, 
but I'm really just going to eyeball it because this is a very, it's more forgiving than you would ever think. It's super forgiving. All right, that feels right. It feels good. We're just going to follow that along. Now, if I were doing this and it wasn't already quilted, I would just mark it. Um, I still might mark it. I could. Uh, I could mark this with a pen once I've got everything pinned in place. But yeah, it looks like I'm doing about a half an inch everywhere. No, it's less than a half an inch. It's more than a quarter, maybe three eighths. One, two, three. About three eighths. Yeah. So we're looking at about three eighths between all of these. Cool. I'm pinning it. Then I am going to mark it, then cut it away, or I'm just going to cut it away. Then we'll do the same thing to the other side, and then we'll do the sides. Something I was just realizing is that I cut this at about four and a quarter, and that is actually perfect because that's pretty much what this border is measuring. And so this whole thing shows me that if I line this, this paper up with this border right here that attaches to my innards, it's I've got action. So you might want to think about cutting your paper six by the width or the depth of your border. It just helps me keep things straight. Like I know this is straight because it's sitting right here on that sewn line. So we have some options here about how to cut this away. You can mark it with a pen, but because this has already been quilted, it's not a nice smooth surface. So I'm just going to use my template here and get to cutting. I am not going to freak out. It's not that serious. Again, very forgiving method. So I'm just going to start here and just follow the curve. I am using this upside down right now. And you see how this curve, it starts here and it goes and because it extends out, I'm still, I've still got action right here, which is perfect. And I'm just going to cut it again. We're not going to freak out. I'm starting at the top. I can see that it's all lined up. These two look good. We're just going to cut it away. And that has been cut away now. Now I'm going to flip it and finish that curve. Lining it up with the paper. Some of you guys are probably freaking out right now, but I'm not leaving that corner piece in place. And I'm just gonna keep pulling it toward me. I'm working at a diagonal angle. I'm gonna flip it, line it up and cut away. I'm making sure that this is straight. These are straight, perfect. This is such a cool way to zhuzh up a quilt. And pull it and flip it. What am I doing? There we are. Match it up. It does not have the, <clears throat> it doesn't have the, what is this stuff called? The, um, the gripper on the other side. So just be mindful of that.
not that much that comes out. You think it's going to be a bunch, but it's not. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Just in case you want to see what it looks like before I pull the pins out, that's it. I am going to leave the corner units in and then we will keep going to, I'm going to actually do the opposite side and then I'll do the sides. Now I'm at my last little bit here <clears throat> and this is this curve and I just want to show you guys what these curves don't come all the way around here. Just stick to right there. Be careful. Um, I'm going to pull this paper here. There we go. So I can see this better. And again, guys, this is super forgiving. Do not freak out. Do not feel like it has to be super duper exact. It doesn't. It's, it really does not. Um, just do the best you can. And I'm just taking off that tip right there. And the rest will stay. And there you have it. All right, now to bind. Okay, so for binding, we've got to make it bias binding. And so I bought a half a yard. No, was it a Yeah, I think I bought a half a yard of fabric. And I am going to trim this up. And then I'm going to show you guys how we're going to make it into bias binding. So for this, we're going to do, we're going to use our bias tape ruler. I just have a square. I've already chopped up the other half of the fabric. And all I'm going to do is just keep cutting this at a 45 degree angle. And then once I have all my strips, I will sew them together. And then we will have bias tape, which will be stretchy. Again, all you need to do is instead of cutting it straight, you're just going to cut it on a diagonal. And so I'm going to take this first cut. which is lovely, and I'm gonna put this to the side. And now I will just keep moving this. This full ruler is two and a half inches. And I hope that I did two and a half inches. I thought I was gonna do two and a quarter, but hopefully I did two and a half, which is the full length of this ruler. And I'm just going to cut again and grab the strip and toss it over there and just keep cutting until I have all of the strips that I want that make sense. I mean, once I get down to about this big, that doesn't make sense to sew. Um, so we'll just take the bigger strips. So now we have our scallops are in there. We've got all of our binding pressed. Um, now it's bias binding. I'm gonna start on a hill and on the hills, you just want to give it some 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 room. And when you get down in here, you want to smooth it. Not pull it per se, but keep it taut. And you should have success with this. So let's uh, go on ahead and get started. So for the curves and the humps and whatnot, you're just going to pretty much do it like you would usually, but right now we are in a ditch. So we're just going to pull it, not really stretch it, but we're going to pull it taut in this ditch. And as we come to this curve, I'm just going to give it a little bit. We're not going to sew a, intentionally sew a, a, a pucker into it or anything, but we are definitely going to give it some slack here on the left where I'm holding it. I'm just holding it a little bit more loosely and I'm pushing it right up against that guard because you know I sew with the guard. But I'm making sure to give it some room to breathe over here. And that's on the hill. We let it breathe on the hill and we're just gonna And then as we come into this curve, we are just going to pull it a little bit tighter. Not stretching it, but 
definitely pulling it a bit. And now we are at a big curve. This is the corner. And we're just going to give it some... I am loving this. I think it is so beautiful. It's all been basted down with my Elmer's glue inside of this bottle here. Um, I forget the name who, I forget whose stuff this is. Uh, what does it say? Sharon Meister glue bottle microfine glue tip. Yep. Yeah. But anyway, it's all basted down. It looks beautiful. I don't know if I'm going to take the pictures with it basted or if I'm going to stitch it down. I don't know how much time I have before I lose the light, but I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Do not be scared to do a curved scalloped border. And these are shallow, so they're not super difficult to sew. When they're really deep, they get a little bit more tight. But this came out beautiful. It's laying flat. I am really pleased with how gorgeous this is. Let me know what you guys think. So I decided to sew it to the back and pull it to the front and machine stitch it. And I love this. Um, I use a, what is that foot called? A, um, what is that foot? It is a stitch in the ditch foot to do my binding currently, which I'm really happy with. So there you go. Let's uh, look at these pictures. Mm -hmm.